Hello all, I hope you are doing great. This uh, video lecture is recorded for uh, civil engineering students at Komar University of Science and Technology. Here we are at uh, lecture 8. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk about design of one-way solid slabs. So, uh, I think uh, at the first uh, lecture, the introduction lecture, we talked about uh, structural elements. By now, we should uh, distinguish between uh, slabs, beams, columns. And during the previous lectures, we talked about the design of beams for uh, flexural and for the shear as well. We talked about all kinds of uh, beams. We talked about uh, single reinforced concrete beams, double reinforced concrete beams, T beams, L beams, and uh, we solved examples uh, about each kind of beams. So uh, now we will talk about the slab. Uh, I think you all know what is slab. Slab is uh, slab is structural elements which uh, below the slab we have beams and below the beams we have columns and below the columns we have uh, foundations and below the foundations we have grounds which finally our loads go will go to uh, grounds to the soil. So uh, mostly. Uh, or let's say we can define the slab we can say that the slab is a structural element mostly it is thickness or always it is thickness is small compared to it is on length and width and another meaning we have the thickness here we have t here mostly t is smaller than the long and short direction this l stands for the long direction and this s stands for the short direction so if we have this plan as you can see the load is will transfer to the beams will go to the beams like here will go to the beams and from the beams as you can see the load is will go to the columns and to the column below it, and finally to the foundation uh, and then to the ground. So, slabs are flexural members. What do we mean by flexural members? So, in the design of slab, the most critical thing is momentous. Like, we will take care of momentous. Momentous are most critical kind of forces. So, their flexural so in the slab, the flexural strength requirement should be satisfied. Like phi mn should be greater than mu. The resistance of the slab, in another meaning md, the resistance of the slab should, should be greater than the applied moment, applied ultimate moment, mu. So mainly we have two kinds of slabs. I think we have taken this as well previously. Uh, we have one-way slab and we have two-way slab. What do we mean by one-way slab and two-way slab? Let's start from two-way slab. When we say two-way slab, we mean that the longer span over the shorter span is smaller than two, like this simple equation. So here we have a two-way slab. This is mathematically. L over S is smaller than two. What do we mean by two-way slab structurally? When we say two-way slab as structural engineers, as civil engineers, we mean that the load transfers in two directions. The load transfers in the long direction and in the short direction. So when we say one-way slab, we mean that the load transfers only in one direction. So this is the direction of long transformations. So the load transfers only in one direction. So which direction, shorter or longer direction? You can see this is parallel to the shorter direction. That means the load transfers only in the short direction. That means we will get deflection only in the short direction. We have no or we have a very, very, very slight amount of deflection in the long direction. We're going to uh, explain this in the next slide more clearly. So mathematically, when L over S is greater or equal to 2, we have a one-way slab. This is a mathematical expression. 
So here, as we said, in one way solid slab deflects and loads in one direction. We said that direction is short direction. If you take a look at this 3D figure, so you can see, so this is the direction of the load distribution, so which is in the short direction. That means we will get our deflection like this. So we will get the deflection in the short direction. So if you take a look at this, this is another, let's say, this is another plan. Here we have the short span is three, five, five. And here the long span is 12, four plus four plus four. Why I didn't, for, for this one is 12. Why I didn't say it is four? Because if you take a look, here there is no beam. Here there is no beam. There, there is no beam. So we can't say that the long span is 4. Like for this panel, the long span is 12. But for this panel, the long span is 4 plus 4, which is 8. For this panel, you can answer it. Like we have 4 plus 4 plus 4. Again, it is 12. So let's check this panel let's check this panel the short span is 3 the long span is 8 so 8 over 3 it is something greater than 2 2 point I think uh, 2 point it is around 2.2 sorry let me It is two point, sorry, it is two point, uh, something greater than 2.5. It's 2.6, around 2.6. So this is greater than two. That means this panel is one way slab. For other panels also, you can check. They are all one way slab. So let me ask you another question. When you say the deflection is in the short direction, that means the main reinforcement also should be put in, in the short direction. The green one is the reinforcement. So let me show you this in plan. So you can see this is here. This is the main reinforcement. The main reinforcement is in the short direction. However, the direction in the, the, the reinforcement in the other direction, in the long direction, is called secondary reinforcement or sometimes it is called shrinkage reinforcement why we call it shrinkage reinforcement because the reinforcement in the long direction in one way slab it's not put in there to resist the deflection it's not for the moment it is just to resist the temperature and shrinkage i think it's clear so we have the reinforcement in two directions but the first layer of reinforcement is in the short direction and the second layer is in the long direction what do we mean by first layer and by second layer? Let me explain this practically. Like when the foreman came, he will ask you, uh, like we have two layers of reinforcement, which one I should put first? You will tell him, please put the reinforcement in the short direction firstly, because these are to resist the moment and then put the second layer. Like if you take a look at the, if you take a look at this from the cross section. So this will be the main reinforcement, the reinforcement in the short direction. This one will be, yeah. So the bottom reinforcement will be the main reinforcement. The reinforcement above it it will be secondary or shrinkage reinforcement so you might say why we why, why we will put the main reinforcement at the bottom because as much as you increase the d because the d is from the center of the bar to the top as much as you will increase the d you will increase the md as well by increasing the depth you will get higher moment of resistance so that's why we are putting it below the 
secondary reinforcement. So here, if I ask you to put the reinforcement for me, you will say, oh, teacher, this is one way, so one way solid slab. So we will put the first layer. This is the first layer. This is the main reinforcement. And then we will put the secondary or the shrinkage reinforcement in the longer direction. Yeah. So here we have the statement, main reinforcement is placed in the shorter direction, while the longer direction is provided with shrinkage reinforcement to limit cracking, to limit cracking, not to resist momentous, guys. So what about two-way slab? What about the deflection in two-way slab? In two-way slab, we said that we have the load transformation in two directions. So that means we have deflection in the two direction as well. This line is, this center line is showing the deflection. Uh, just let me check whether I'm recording or not. Yes, everything is going well. So the deflection will be in two directions. That means the reinforcement in both directions, in the short direction and in the long direction are called main reinforcement. Is it clear? So here, bending will take place in the two directions in a dish-like form. I think you all know what do we mean by dish. Yeah, the deflection is in both directions. Accordingly, main reinforcement is required in two directions. So you're going to take design of two-way slab in, the, uh, in another course, in RC2, but here we will only design for one-way slab because our time is limited. So, I think by now you distinguish between one-way and two-way slab and you know that the, uh, in the slab usually the thickness is smaller than the uh, L and S. Longer span, shorter span. So, let us talk about minimum thickness of one-way slab. What is the minimum thickness in one-way slab? Do you remember in BIM, we said that we have the minimum allowed thickness by the code? Here also, we have this table. I think you're familiar with it. So, minimum thickness should be, if you have a simply supported BIM, the, at least, at least, the thickness of the slab should be L over 20. If you have, let's say, a cantilever, the thickness of the slab, at least should be L over 10. So what is L? L is the span in the direction of deflection. Like it is the shorter span. What about the cover? If you remember, I, I think you should remember this table. Yeah, we have taken it in uh, design of beam as well. But here we need only this part and rarely or sometimes we need this part like if you have slabs joists and walls for the slab if you use uh, let's say number 43 and number 53 57 bars the cover will be 40 millimeters if you use 36 bars and smaller the cover will be 20 so have fun so if your let's say if your uh, element if your slab exposed to weather or in contact with ground we said that you need a greater cover if you use bars 19 through let's say number 57 you're gonna use 50 if you use number 16 bars you need or if you use wires and so on you will need 40 millimeter of covers so i think now everything is clear mostly in this lecture notice mostly we will use this we will use 20 millimeters as cover so i think by now you know that the uh, cover you know you know something about cover you know something about uh, the minimum thickness of the slab let us talk about the spacing the spacing between bars 
Because here also we have a limitation for the spacing, like we can't put our bars very close to each other because we will get a concrete block there. So the minimum spacing, if you are talking about the flexural reinforcement, when I say flexural reinforcement, I mean main reinforcement, the minimum cover should be greater than the smaller smaller of these two like you have 3 hs and you have 450 if you are talking about shrinkage reinforcement when i say shrinkage reinforcement i mean secondary reinforcement the cover should be greater than the minimum or the smaller of these two, 5HS, 3HS. The difference only is, in the main reinforcement is 3HS, but here it is 5HS, because it is secondary reinforcement. You can find these statements in ACI as well. You can find it in ACI 7723 and ACI 7724. Just go read ACI, guys. Uh, so now you know the minimum spacing as well. How should I design the slab? Design of one-way solid slab. How should I uh, start it? Guys, when you design the solid slab, just Take a strip. Let's see, one-way solid slabs are designed as a number of independent one meter wide strips, which span in the short direction and are supported on crossing beams. These strips are designed as rectangular beams. What do we mean by strips? If you have this slab, just take a strip, take a portion of the slab, which it is with it will be one meter, sorry, Yeah, take a strip of one meter like this and design this one meter strip as a beam. Like just imagine you have a beam, it is width is one meter and the thickness is, just tell me the thickness, think about it, is same as the thickness of the slab, HS, design a beam. Just imagine that you have a beam, it is width is 100, 1 meter, it is height is, let's say, same height of the beam. Like, if you take a look at this strip, at the longitudinal, let's say, section of this strip, you will get something like this, very clear. So, you are designing a slab, but you converted the slab to a beam now. I think you are very good at the design of beams. So we converted the slab to beam to you as well. So you can design it, this is easy peasy. So I think you're familiar with this equation as well. After taking a one meter wide strip, just find the row. You know what I mean by row. So you have FC dash of the slab, FY, and you have MU, you can get, if you have a beam like this with a WU, I think you all able to, uh, how to say, you all able to, so, oh, you all able to design, uh, to find MU, find MU, you know what's B, B is, just tell me, is one meter strip, and D is, same for the slab. You have H of the slab, HS, so DS, H of the slab, minus cover, minus, let's say, phi of the bar, over 2. So, yes, here we have 
Yeah, if you take a look at this, these bars are main reinforcement. We are designing for the, and this is the direction of our strip. Like if you designed your slab for one meter, for one meter strip, all the other strips like this one meter strip adjacent to it here, another one meter strip here, another one meter strip here, all these strips will be the same. So just design for one meter strip and say it is for all the slab. So after finding the row, after finding the row, you can find area of the steel as well. After finding the area of the steel for one meter, you can convert it to the spacing. So easy peasy. But you should be aware of something. You should be aware of tension control section. You should be careful that your slab section should be tension controlled. What do I mean by tension control? Failure, I mean failure in the steel or yielding in the steel before crushing of the concrete. Yielding, I'm repeating it, yielding in the steel before crushing of the concrete. So how we gonna check this? We said that rho T, same as beam, should be greater than or equal to 0 0.005. You can do it same as this, or you can find row maxes. Your row, actual row, row from the previous slide, should be smaller or should be, sorry, your row should be smaller than row max, actual row, the row from the previous slide. That means you ensure that your section is tension controlled. Everything is going well. So that was about main reinforcement. What do you think about the shrinkage reinforcement? How are we going to design the reinforcement in the long direction? Uh, or secondary reinforcement or shrinkage reinforcement? Actually, this is easy peasy because the code gave us this table. You can, from this table, you can get the row for the reinforcement in the long direction in the let's say shrinkage reinforcement if you are using uh, let's say a steel with fy smaller than 420 rho will be 0 0.002 if you are using a steel with fy greater than 420 rho will be the greater of these two so this is rho for the shrinkage reinforcement you don't need to find any momentous because when you talk about the shrinkage reinforcement or main reinforcement or secondary reinforcement, these are all same. You are not talking about momentous. That's why just use this table. Uh, and also regarding the main reinforcement, regarding the reinforcement in the short direction, the code says that the row for the short direction, I mean this row, I mean this row, it should be greater than the row, greater than or equal to than the row in long direction. So here we have it in this slide. Like your row, the actual row should be greater than the AS or should be greater than the these are called or sometimes these are called AS minimum should be greater than this if you are again if you are using FY with a smaller than uh, 420 your row or your AS if you converted row to AS you know how to convert row into AS AS is equal to row BD it should be greater than 0 0.002 if you are using uh, a reinforcement with uh, FY with greater than 420, your row or your AS should be greater than the greater of these two values. So, what about shear? We said that slab is a flexural member. So, does that mean I don't need to care about shear? No, that doesn't mean ignore the shear. Sometimes 
sometimes or rarely you will get shear failure. You need to design your slab to resist the shear. But how can I put stirrups in slab? Like when you design the slab, you don't need to put the stirrups. You need to resist the shear just by your concrete. In another meaning, you should be careful that 5VC is greater than VU. If you got this, everything will be all right. That means you are happy. If not, just please increase the thickness of the slab. Enlarge the depth of the slab. Increase the depth of the slab. So, guys, in terms of the design, this might be my last slide. But when you start the design, after finding the depth of the beam, after finding edge, you need to check that 5VC is greater than VU, and then check for the flexural. So when when you design a slab, you need to check that your edge is adequate to resist the shear. If it was okay, start the flexural design. Start MU. What about structural analysis? Or in another meaning, I told you how to take one meter strip. So you will get something like this. So how to find mu like if you take a look at this beam this beam is statically determinate or indeterminate i think you all say oh it is statically indeterminate that means i need to go to the moment distribution method or force method that complicated method is in structural analysis that means it is not easy to analyze it but fortunately and hopefully mr code says you can use approximate structural analysis. You know, what do I mean by approximate structural analysis? These slides are same as beams. Believe me, I didn't change any word. You should be at least more than three spans. Load should be uniformly distributed. Unfactored live load does not exceed three times the unfactored dead load. Members are similar section, dimensions. So everything same. You, need, you can use these. You have this as well in beams. We talked about this in details. I think we spent like uh, half an hour talking about this. So I'm not repeating it here. It's for you guys. Take care of it. I'm not spending your time. So this is we set for more than two spans. And this is for, let's say, for two, for two spans. If I had one span, what shall I do? Can I use this? No. You should be at, you should have at least two spans. This is for the shear. When you design for the shear, same as beam. We took this uh, last lecture when we were designing for shear, designing a beam for shear. Yes. And finally, summary of one-way solid slab design procedure. Let us talk about the procedure, guys. Be with me. Before everything, select representative one meter wide design strip. Strip is to span in the short direction. Take one meter strip and then choose a slab thickness. How do I need to, ch to choose a slab thickness? Go to the table. Check. What do you have? You have continuous. You have cantilevered slab. What do you have? And then find the slab thickness. Like sometimes you will get two different slab thicknesses. Like if you have a continuous beam. Sorry. If you have a continuous beam. Sorry. If you have a continuous slab. We are talking a slab. I used two beams. So like here. We have five meter. Let's say we have uh, another span. Five meter. Let's say four meter and let's say five meter. So when you go to the table, hmm, I don't need to. Why 
when you go to the table yeah when you go to the table you have like here you have one end continuous you have both end continuous for the both end continuous you have l over 28 for one end continuous you have l over 24 so let me check which one is greater which one it will give you greatest thickness greater thickness of course l over 24 so just here like for this span i have 5 over 24 I will get around 20 I, I will get around 208 millimeter slab thickness like 20.8 centimeters thickness but here in this panel what I will get 4 over 24 of course I will get smaller value I will get around 16.6 centimeters so is that practical to like use different slab thicknesses uh, but it's not in terms of practice it is not practical so what shall I do in this case just choose the greatest value just choose maximum edge design for the maximum edge yes let me delete this so after the second step after choosing the slab thickness you need to calculate wu and then draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for each of the strips so if your structure structure was indeterminate go to the approximate method if it was determinate do it by yourself because it is not difficult and then check after drawing the sheet and moment diagram check the adequacy of the slab thickness in terms of resisting shear by satisfying the following equation yeah 5vc should be greater than vu if this equation was not satisfied just go ahead and change the slab thickness and after that step design the flex and shrinkage reinforcement so for the flex trial you need to find rho so for the shrinkage also you need to go to the table after that draw a plan and section of the slab with the reinforcements I mean draw the detailing so let us start with this example we have this example which says by using ACI code approximate structural analysis so you need to use approximate method designed for a warehouse warehouse thus this is important just be careful sometimes I will say or the question will say warehouse or it, it will say school or it will say hospital do you remember chapter 1 this is for you just go to the ASCE tables and find the live load if live load was not given a continuous one-way solid slab supported on beams four meter apart so this is the slab which is part of the slab is shown assume that the beam web is 30 centimeters that means this dimension is 30 centimeter Yeah, that dead load is 3 kilonewton per square meter. The dead load. In addition to the own weight. When it says in addition to the to it is own weight, that means please add the self weight as well. Because this value is not in this value the self weight is not included. You need to add it. And the live load also is given. It is 3 kilonewton per square meter yeah fc dash is given fy is given start with me what shall we do first guys before everything you need to check whether this slab is one way or two way mm, it 
is 8 over 4 or even it is you can you can't say 8 it is greater than 8 because there is no beams in this direction if you take 8 8 over 4 it is 2 so that means it is one way that means the load transfers only in the short direction as this shown here you can see it so selected one meter strip this is the one meter strip as you can see it is in the short direction and this is the longitudinal section and then find the slab thickness so this is a continuous that's why we use it L over 24. If you take a look at this span, this is one end continuous. That means it is L over, sorry, it is L over 28. This is L over 24. And this is L, oh guys, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. The last one is L over 28 28 so which panel will give us the greatest edge of course this panel L over 24 that's why I chose L over 24 so we got we got 167 millimeters it's not practical to say to the foreman, please uh, use 16.7 centimeter. He can't do it. Just, just use 17 centimeter. It will be much more practical. So the slab thickness is 17 centimeter. Is that enough? You need to check the slab thickness as well for the shear. So. To do that, we need to find the shear diagram. To get the shear diagram, you need to find WU. So, find the slab weight. This is the slab thickness. Multiply gamma of the concrete. This is gamma of the concrete. So, we got this. After that, get W. So, W is 13.5. And then... There is a note here. This span is from the center of the beams. To use approximate method, we need the clear span. We need LN. That's why I got the clear span. I think you know what I mean by, by clear span. Clear span means here to here. This is the clear span. This is LN. You need to reduct the thickness of the column. Yes, this is the moment diagram, same as the beam, yes, as you can see, the maximum positive value is 16.8, the maximum negative value is 18.5, you need to design for these two values. This is the shear diagram, as you can see, the maximum shear force is 28.7. All units are in kilonewton. Just check for the shear maximum, VU, we said it is 28.7, 5 VC is 95.8 kilonewton. That means it is greater than VU max, that means the concrete alone can resist the shear. Here you don't need to compare it with 0.55 VC. You don't need minimum shear reinforcement because the slab is alone can resist the concrete. Slab alone can resist the shear. And start for the flexural design. You need to make an assumption. You need to assume that phi is equal to 0.9. In another meaning, you need to assume that your section is tension controlled and then start, find rho. Like, we had two types of momentus. Just if we go back to this, you can see 
on the supporters we have which kind of moment we have negative moment at the middle span we have positive moment so guys you need to design for both moments just take the maximum negative and maximum positive design for these two and everything will be all right like let's start for the maximum negative moment maximum negative moment is 18.5 kilonewton meter so row will be 0.00241 and row max is 0 0.02 that means it's greater than actual row this actual row that means it is tension control just find as negative as we got 347 square millimeters and if you remember as minimum find the as minimum as well 0 0.0018 our AS is greater than AS minimum. That means it is okay. If it was not greater, just use AS minimum. So, how to convert this area of steel to the spacing? Because in uh, slab, we need to find the spacing. How to convert it to spacing? Guys, if in one meter or 1000 millimeter, we were required to use 304 7 square millimeters of reinforcement i mean this value so in one spacing between two bars let's say we need to use 79 square millimeters this area of one bar This is area of, sorry, 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 guys. Mm -hmm. like yes 347 and one meter I will convert it into millimeter so one bar in S just you can find S you can see it here S will be equal to 79 multiply 1000 over 347 so this will be the spacing between bars this is the spacing between bars it is 227.5 millimeters it's not practical just use 200 millimeter or 20 centimeter so we will say use 510 at 20 centimeters yes just be careful this spacing should be smaller than smaller than the smallest of these two values the smallest of these two is 450 millimeters this is 20 it is smaller than 450 that means everything is okay that means we are happy Regarding the maximum positive moment, regarding MU, 16.8, find rho again in the same procedure, find rho max, check whether the section is tension control, and then find AS positive, and then from this AS positive, compare it with the AS minimum, it is greater than the AS minimum, and then find AS. This is for the bottom reinforcement. And then again, do the same check, compare it with the this spacing, it's 251 millimeters, 25.1 centimeter. It's not practical, just say use 25 centimeter. So 25 centimeter, it should be greater than the minimum of these two. It is greater, that means use 5, 10 at 25 centimeters. 
finally this is our detailing this is our detailing before the detailing just calculate the area of the shrinkage reinforcement we said we will go to the table and from the table use phi 10 millimeter at 25 centimeter in the long direction this will be our detailing as you can see these bars this is the negative bar and this bar this is the positive bar here we have another negative bar positive bar negative bar just take a look here we have phi 10 at 25 millimeters how do i got this this is for the positive moment just go to the previous slide yes here it is what about this this is for the negative moment just go to the beef. yeah here we have it use phi 10 at 20 centimeters yes and what about these bars these are the longitudinal bars here we have it use phi 10 at 25 centimeters and here from the plan as you can see this bar is the bottom bar which we said it will be phi 10 at 25 and these are the top bar which will be phi 10 at 20 centimeters uh, i hope uh, you will take benefit of this if you had any question please do not hesitate to ask me from google classroom or just uh, mail me thanks have a nice day